My Line. Brought to you by Kellogg's, the folks who give you the widest choice of cereals in the whole wide world. All the great grains in the forms you like best. Yours from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. We're very happy to welcome tonight a new guest panelist, the star of the very popular television show, American Broadcast, Dick Clark. Thank you. I had the pleasure tonight of meeting for the first time a lady I've admired for a long, long time. She'll sit right here, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you, Dick. Come on, American Broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> that was American Bandstand. That's you know right, that. <laughs> And now, the very debonair publisher of Random House, known to his intimates as the Count of Monte Kisco, oh. Bennett Sir. <laughs> and here, to the great surprise of practically nobody, is our brilliant, fast-talking, and frequently coherent master of ceremonies, oh, Mr. John Charles <laughs> Daly. The Count of Monte Kisco. Somebody <laughs> did it to Bennett. Nice going, Arlene. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to have you with us And What's My Line. We have some interesting occupations and some good occasions for good fun tonight. We trust we'll have the fun and stick the panel. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger after this word from Dennis James speaking for Kellogg's. Hi. You want to see a familiar sight now that school is out? What with the swimming and the baseball and the bicycles, the youngsters are on the go from breakfast right through to bedtime. Well, that means one thing for sure. It means they need their protein. The bodybuilding kind of protein that you're going to find in Kellogg's Special K. You know, for every pound a youngster weighs, he needs twice as much protein as you and I. And we certainly need a lot. Well, right here is where you can get a lot. 15% of all the protein we need each day is in an average serving of Special K in milk. Twice as much protein as the average of all cereals. And it's high quality protein too. Remember what I've said, high quality protein has eight essentials. Well, all eight are in Kellogg's Special K and all eight are in milk. Together, they are perfect protein partners. So keep built up for a busy day. Enjoy Kellogg's Special K. Pick up a package next time you shop. And now let's meet our first contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? <laughs> Corporal R. K. Beecham, right? Yes, sir. Now, I hope I'm not going to start anything. What does the R stand for? Richard, sir. And the K? King. Richard King Beecham. Yes, no sir. problems. No Percy's or Frothinghams or anything like that. No, huh? sir. Fine. Corporal, where are you from? I'm from originally from Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, sir, and uh, now stationed in Paris Island. Paris Island. Yes, Fine. Sir. Well, Corporal, the panel. Panel. Corporal Beecham, now will you join me over here? Uh, do you know how we keep score, Corporal? Yes, sir. Fine. On that basis, let's let the folks at home and the friends in the audience know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, as you can readily ascertain by uh, the corporal's uniform, he is a member of the fine United States Marine Corps. Naturally, what you have to figure out is what he does with the United States Marine Corps. We will tell you, however, because uh, you probably wouldn't be able to work this out otherwise, the corporal is salaried. <laughs> <laughs> and now let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Corporal, do you instruct in the Marine Corps? 
No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Corporal Beecham, do you perform the duties that you uh, perform uh, in various places beside Paris Island? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Corporal Beecham, uh, are people better off or happier because of what you do? Yes. The I would say this, that the answer there could be yes and no, but certainly in uh, certain specific instances, the answer would have to be yes. I thought it was the drill sergeants that gave them such a hard time. Uh, sometimes yes and sometimes no. Do you do any of your work indoors? No. That makes it three down and seven to go. Dick Clark. Corporal, I assume that what you do is in connection with your service for Uncle Sam. <laughs> be. <laughs> Richard, you won't try that one again. Well, uh, you perform some sort of service. It's con in connection with the fact that you are in the armed services. Yes. I mean, this is, I thought maybe you had a side enterprise. Or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would really be a... a, a Very interesting. Who knows? He's got the hair clipper concession in Paris Island. That's right. <laughs> there you are. Is what you do more physical than mental? Yes. It takes place uh, out of doors. Yes. Do you deal with more than one person at a time? <laughs> the question was, do you deal with more than one person at a time? Does he perform his services, say, for a group as opposed to one person? Well, I would think we would have to agree, wouldn't you, that the services can really be um, said to be performed for a group as, as much as for one person, yes. Sure. <laughs> he is a big help, isn't he? Uh, does your work ever uh, call for you raising the tone of your voice above normal speaking level? Yes. Would those, uh, would it be in the, in the form of orders that you were shouting? <laughs> yes, sir, it could be. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. It could be. Could be. You do you perform these services for the uh, men in, say, your company? Your immediate, are they under your immediate direction? No. no. Could we have a, <laughs> Could we have a conference? Go. You may have 10 seconds I for a conference. I have an idea. You have a weenie? I'll try it, shall I? Yeah. And then, then the conference. I bet it's the same thing. Uh, would you be given to admonishing anybody for behavior below and beyond the call of duty? <laughs> Is that what you had in mind, Dorothy? No? No, it was more far out. But he does it outdoors. Yes. Uh, would you be connected in any way with what we have come to know as the, know as the military police? <laughs> would he be connected in any way with what we have come, come to, know to know as the I don't know what they police? call it in the Marine Corps. I think we would have to yeah. say you're corrected in, in any way. Yes. If somebody got out of hand, you could uh, give them one of your good holes and take them to the commanding officer, could you not? Well, it, I don't think he'd take them to the commanding <laughs> officer. No, that's five dollars. Oh, no, Dorothy, you've got it. Yes, sir. Uh, all right, you have ten seconds. She's for... got a great idea. <coughs> yeah. Sure. Is it your... Well, go, you ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I just want... There are lady Marines, aren't there? I thought maybe he had something to do with taking care of them or giving them orders or something. <laughs> he doesn't look the type to me. I'm going to leave that with you. Corporal, are you, uh, are you in... Ch have you got something to do with the place where they keep uh, uh, Marines who have uh, broken some of the rules on... No. Nothing Six down and four to now go, you go ahead, All right, Corporal Beecham. I'll get a fast no. Have you anything to do with women? Who doesn't? <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> he's a Marine now. No. I mean in the armed Corporal forces. says he's married, if that's what you mean. That's not what I mean. I mean in the armed forces. Do you have anything to do with, uh, you mean specifically with the Women's Auxiliary of the United States Marine Corps? Something like that. Uh -huh. No, I don't. No, that's right. Seven down, three to go, Mr. Clark. Corporal, what you do, does it entail the use of an implement or a piece of machinery or equipment? Is that essential to your job? Sometimes, yes. Uh, does this machine move from one place to another? Uh, this thing? Yes. Is it a, a weapon of war? <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Eight out of two to go, Miss Francis. It moves from one place to the other. 
Does it have wheels? Yes. Are you in it at the time? When it moves, is he in it? Yes. We hope so. Does it stay on the ground? Yes. Most of the time. <laughs> uh, did Bennett want to say? Did you want to say? I wonder if he drives the thing that they take the people, they take the presidents around it, you know, the jeep or something. Oh. Um, do you collect strays? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid Bennett. Was that Bennett's idea? We'd have to say yes to that. Well, uh, I don't know exactly what Bennett has in mind, but is it a, a jeep, uh, and you go around and pick up people that are? Uh, uh, no. That's, thank you very much. Nine out of one to go, Mr. It is. It is not. Uh, it is not a machine in which you collect. Do, do you not put some of your charges into this machine? Yeah. It, <laughs> yes. Yes. And the machine moves around places. Yeah. Yes. You take them to and from the place where they're going to be incarcerated. He's a dog catcher. <laughs> is he a dog catcher? <laughs> he runs the canine. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Since Arlene spoke out of turn, we flipped the card anyway. There was no request for a conference, but Arlene, you hit it right on the nose. Corporal Beecham is the dog catcher at the Marine Base, Paris Island. And it's wow. a lucky dog that's caught by you, Corporal. <laughs> and he's attached to the Provo Marshal's office, which is why we answered uh -huh. the question uh, previously posed about his attachment to the mil Marine Military Police. Yes, Darn. John, may I ask why they need a dog catcher down there? Are there so many dogs? Well, mostly because they got dogs there. I guess. <laughs> How many dogs have you got? Have you got lots of dogs? Well, right now we have about 12 in the pound. And as they have trained dogs as a part of the, the corps, don't they you? They wouldn't go well, not down at Paris Island, no. They wouldn't but, arrest a trained dog. No, you would never arrest a trained dog, just trained like you don't need any military back. police anyway. You know that, because <laughs> everybody's trained. But the nice thing is, actually, uh, you certainly, I know, are proud of your service. You wear your uniform so well, but there's also a, a personal thing here, I think, that we ought to... Agree, we had a little birthday party backstage before we came out because this is the birthday of Corporal Richard Beecham and the birthday of Miss Celine Grant Daly, my daughter, and they had a birthday party just before the birthday. <laughs> Corporal Beecham is 22 and my daughter is 56. <laughs> Leastwise, my daughter said if I told her age, that would be it, so we'll say she's 56. <laughs> All right? Yes, Corporal, we had a load of fun, and I hope that you enjoyed it. You have reason to be proud of that uniform. It's a great fighting service and yes, a sir, it is. very fine bunch of men. Thanks for being our guest. Thank Good you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, panel, that was a tough one, but we had a good deal of fun with it. You did come through at the 11th hour and catch it. Let's see what you can do with the second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Kathy? Kathy Gretchman, is that right? <laughs> is it Miss? Or Mrs. Gretchen? Mrs. Gretchen. Mrs. Gretchen, where are you from? South Dakota. South Dakota? Oh, that's wonderful. What town is South Dakota? Springfield. Springfield? Nice mm -hmm. to have you with us. Mrs. Gretchen, the panel. Thank panel, you. Mrs. Gretchen, will you join me here, please? Do you know how we keep score, Mrs. Gretchen? Mm -hmm. Fine, then let's let the folks at home and this nice enthusiastic body of the citizens of the United States who are here with us know exactly what your line is. <clears throat> panel, Mrs. Gretchman is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with the Count of Monte Kisco. <laughs> oh, what a joy. Isn't that awful? Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Gretchman, it is. Hmm? Mrs. Gretchman, uh, do you perform a service of some kind? Yes. Is it a service that you render to human beings? Yes. Uh, and can we uh, eliminate animals from this altogether? There are no animals involved in this service, whatever. Small conference. 
I mean, your question is, do you want to actually clarify the singular point of whether there is any relationship at all between the service and other than human beings, is that right? Mr. Panel Moderator, all I asked was, <laughs> are there any animals involved in any way in what Mrs. Gretchman is uh, performing? But I put it in the form that if there are no animals, I get a yes. If there are animals, I get a no. Well, you get a no. <laughs> all right. <laughs> One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, do you do the same thing for animals that you do for human beings? Yes. Uh, could... <laughs> oh, that'll make it pretty easy. Give another dog cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, are these animals domestic animals? Or domesticated animals? Yeah. Usually? Yeah. Uh, are any of them four-footed? Yes. Yeah. Uh, would you perform, could you perform this service for men as well as women, or women as well as men? Yes. Gender has nothing to do with it? No. Never could, knew. <clears throat> could anyone on the panel, do you imagine, use your service, or would any one of us be likely to? Could. Could. Uh, is the animal that is most applicable to your work a dog or a cat? No. No, no, that makes it uh, too darn a date to go, Mr. Clark. Mrs. Gretchman, uh, the services you perform for the animals and the people, uh, does anything happen to the animals that eventually makes it a good service for people? <laughs> no. If you have if you have any idea what I mean. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking <laughs> that maybe she does something for the animals and sells what's left to the people. Oh, oh, that... <coughs> let's rush to give you a no. Three oh. down and seven, they go, Miss Francis. Do animals and people enjoy your services at the same time? Is that possible? Yes. Could the people ride any of these animals that you have? No. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Do uh, any products or byproducts from these animals uh, have commercial value? No. <laughs> <laughs> Small <Smoke on. laughs> Well, Bennett, it's a very difficult question to answer because actually it would be difficult to say that uh, there is no animal involved, the byproduct of well, which would not in some subsequent well, term. Well, I just date. push this aside then and ask, have you got any connection with a zoo? Oh, a no. zoo? No. <laughs> I said five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mrs. Gretchman, are these animals that you are connected with in some way alive when you are connected with them? Yeah. Are they the kind of animals that could ever come into the house? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. But would, would we be regarded as a little eccentric if any of us had them in our houses? <laughs> no, I mean, we can't speak to the point of whether you'd be regarded eccentric, but on this specific, specific issue of having some of these animals in the house, the answer would be no. That makes it six down and four to go, Mr. Clark. I'm going to give you one more minute on this. Yes. Mrs. Gretchman, would it be possible after this animal passed on? <laughs> for, uh, <laughs> somehow I get the idea on the wrong track. <laughs> Could, what I want, would it be possible, say, for Miss Francis to wear this animal around her neck? <laughs> You mean just as it is? No, 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 you know, duly processed. Duly processed. Well, I'm going to flip on... Wait a minute, is, could I just ask one question? Yes, dear. Does the animal have wings? Wings? <laughs> I give up. It isn't that you gave up, I gave up. <laughs> Mrs. Gretchman is a ferry boat captain. It's the, it's the ferry that had wings. <laughs> <laughs> she is the captain of the ferry boat Bertha, which provides service between Running Water, South Dakota, and Neobrara, Neobrara, Nebraska. This is where one question through, that animal question through, through us the, 10 everything miles off. That's yeah. right, and we just watched you get yeah. further yeah. and further, <laughs> farther and farther and further and further, and there you were, you see. But uh, we had, uh, I think, a good run, and we gave them a good run. Mm -hmm. 
and we hope you have lots of very oh, successful inside. ferry runs. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> nice to have had you as a guest, and hope you have a good visit with us. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our alternate sponsor. There once was a girl named Claire who was proud of the waves in her hair, but the hot summer day made her waves look like hay. Poor Claire, summer hair, such despair. Wake up, wake up, wake up the wave in your hair. Get swab, try swab, condition with swab, your wave will be lovely with swab. Dry, parched hair can't be beautiful. But a little suave hairdressing instantly corrects dryness. Suave wakes up your wave by restoring precious beauty oils that add life and luster to your hair. Yet there's no oily look or feel because only suave contains amazing greaseless lanolin. No wave can look its best without suave. All waves are softer, more natural, more manageable with suave. So wake up your wave. Use Helene Curtis Suave. Lotion or the new special suave cream for extra dry hair. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I asked my friends on the panel to blindfold themselves, as you know. Are the blindfolds on in place, panel? Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? All right, panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery guest, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin it all with Dorothy Kilgallen. Have you ever made a phonograph record of a popular song? Oh, we? Oui. Ah. Mr. Clark, you are obviously female. Uh, <laughs> have you ever appeared in a motion picture? We? Oui. Miss Francis? Are you in New York because you are in a picture that is about to open or because you are making a picture here? We? Oui. Mr. Sir? Are you noted for being a very good singer? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, were you born somewhere other than the United States? We? Oui. We? Oui. Clark? The boys have been you are obviously him. not a, a woman of France. <laughs> are, are you English? Oh, no. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Dorothy said the boys have been looking for you, as indeed they have. And if you are here making a picture now, are you by any chance a girl that should be answering si instead of oui, Sophia Loren? Yes. That's right. Actually, I knew we were in trouble, Miss Lauren, as soon as they got to the point of, of you being born out of the country. Miss Lauren is indeed making a picture here. If I read my newspapers correctly last week, they had a small riot down in Pennsylvania Station because yeah. 2,000 people tried to get oh, in a picture with you. <laughs> that was at Long Beach, I think, wasn't it? Was it Long, Long Beach? Yes, Long Beach? Uh, but it was supposed to be Miami, really. It was supposed to be Miami, Miami. and it was Long Beach? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like. There you are. What is the name of the picture? <laughs> that kind of woman. Ah, wonderful. Is this the one Sidney Lovett is directing? Sidney, yes. 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 Ah, wonderful. Yes. Well, John. it's nice to know that one of your uh, great reputation has come to New York to have a picture made. Thank we you wish you very much. great success with it and John, offer our thanks. John, you ought to mention the picture that Miss Lorraine is opening in Tuesday night, The Key. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, it's opening in, Tuesday right? night, The Key, at the Odeon and Fine Arts. I'm very thrilled about it. Actually, this, I have seen this. I think maybe you have been it in a preview, and I must say it's a very fine picture. Yes. Congratulations you for your performance. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> we'll have another contestant after this word from our sponsor.
Hi, this is Dennis James again. You know, a little while ago I said, uh, to keep built up for a busy day, enjoy Kellogg's Special K. Well, I just want to emphasize that word, enjoy. Just pour milk over a big bowl full of Kellogg's Special K, and there you have it. Man, you're set to enjoy the best tasting, most delicious breakfast you can find. And it's just loaded with protein, too. You see, the Kellogg folks worked for several years with doctors and scientists from leading universities to see just how nutritious a cereal could be made and still have a delicious flavor. Well, there's the result. Kellogg's Special K, the perfect protein partner for milk. So get both, protein plus flavor. Just look for the package with the big red K on the front and all the protein inside. Kellogg's Special K. Incidentally, it also comes in the Kellogg Handy Pack, eight individual packages. So enjoy it real soon, okay? Okay. All right, very quickly, let's have another contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Larry? Gilbert. Right? Where are you from, Larry? I'm from Muhammad, Illinois. Panel, Larry is from Muhammad, Illinois. Come with me, Larry. You know how we keep score? We do. All right, right now, let's let everybody outside of the panel know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, you have less than two minutes. Larry Gilbert is salaried. Let's begin the general questioning with Dick Clark. Larry, do you, uh, outside of your salary, the, the company you work for, does it make money? Is it a profit-making organization? Yes, it is. Does your work bring you in contact with members of uh, the male and female sex? Yes. Are these people, for the most part, young people? No. no. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Do you work indoors? Yes. Uh, would it be considered a, uh, a building that would house things that I might buy? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Gilbert, is, is this a summer job? Are you a schoolboy who's working just for the summer? Yes. Would this be the kind of job where you would get experience that might help you in later life? No. No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is there a product involved in what you do? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Clark. Larry, is your work more physical than mental? Yes. Well, either way. Six up and a half a dozen down, Dick. Do you work days, daytimes versus nighttime? You work both. You work both. You said do you work days versus nights. That's five down and five to go. One question, Miss Francis. Are you a guide of any sort? A no. guide? No, that makes it no more time. We'll flip all the cards because we've run out of time. Larry is a telephone operator for the General Telephone Company in Mohammed. That's oh. it. Thank you, Larry. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. And now, Dick Clark, it's been grand having you with us, and uh, much congratulations on your huge success, which you justly deserve on American Bandstand. Until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Kilgallen. Good night, Mr. Daly. Good night, Dick. Come again. Thank you very much. Good night, Arlene. Good night. You're darling, Dick. Good night, Bennett. You're this darling. Is, this is one time Muhammad came to the mountain. Good night, John. Oh, oh. <laughs> good night, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line. If you'd like to attest and see the panel and our guests in person, write for tickets to What's My Line, CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, 22, New York. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by American Airlines. What's My Line is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Sophia Loren co-stars with William Holden in the new Columbia picture, The Key.